Hi everyone, we are from National University of Defense Technology. The topic we are going to share is about automatically exposing hidden interfaces in embedded web applications of IoT devices. Nowadays, IoT has been increasingly popular. As this chart shows, IoT technology reached $100 billion in market size for the first time in 2017 and forecasts suggest that this figure will grow to around 1.6 trillion by 2025. With the wide adoption of IoT devices, in fact, embedded web applications play an essential role in managing those devices. Here is an example. For a smart home IoT system, users can configure devices or read data of sensors from this web-based dashboard. At the same time, unfortunately, more and more attack incidents indicate that the security of IoT has become a big concern. For instance, in 2016 the well-known botnet Mirai targeted online consumer devices and launched multiple rounds of DDoS attacks, by exploiting vulnerabilities on IoT devices. Today, the issue is still serious, in March of 2021. A report by Palo Alto says that for 135,000 security cameras that they examined, 54% of them had at least one vulnerability. Among the various types of vulnerabilities, the hidden interface is an impotent target. Therefore, in this work, we develop a tool to automatically expose hidden web interfaces of IoT devices. The hidden interfaces allow attacks to remote access an IoT device without any permissions. It is probably the most feasible way to attack embedded web applications. From statistics of CVE, we found that there are two types of hidden interfaces that are very common. The first type is the information disclosure interface. An information disclosure interface displays sensitive information about the device. A device setting interface allows users to configure device setting without authorization. There are two types of interfaces in embedded web applications, protected interfaces and unprotected interfaces. Those two types of hidden interfaces are unprotected interfaces. The other type of unprotected interface is open interface that is designed to be open to users, for example, the login page. A line of previous research focus on vulnerability detection of IoT devices. They target memory corruptions, taint-style vulnerabilities and other domain-specific vulnerabilities. The other line of research focus on the broken authorization problem but the target programs are not web of IoT devices, they focus on cloud backends. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first work that focus on exposing broken authorization problems in the web of IoT devices. Here is an overview of the tool IoT Scope. The input is a firmware image. There are four modules in the tool – Interface Enumeration, Probing Request Delivery, Identification of Unprotected Interfaces and Identification of Hidden Interfaces. The tool interacts with a physical device or firmware in an emulator. The tool's output are two types of hidden interfaces that we mentioned. Implementing the design is not straightforward. We encountered several challenges. The first challenge is how to enumerate all possible interfaces, given that the web interfaces reside in various locations with different forms in the firmware image. The second challenge is how to identify unprotected interfaces from all interfaces. As developers do not always follow the standard way of implementation, we cannot tell the type of interfaces based on HTTP status code. The third challenge is how to identify hidden interfaces among the unprotected interfaces. On one hand, unlike memory corruptions indicated by program crash, there lacks a signal to indicate an hidden interface. 
On the other hand, it is difficult to differentiate hidden interfaces from open interfaces like login pages. As we said, the first module constructs possible probing requests, by extract filenames and path names through static firmware analysis. We decompose the firmware image and use regular expressions to analyze the web files and get a list of filenames. Then we analyze the root directory of the file system to get path names. Aggressively concatenating path names and file names can construct probing requests. In this step, we obtain all interfaces. IoT Scope sends each probing request twice. The first request carries a certificate in the authenticated HTTP head, while the second request does not carry a certificate. We collect the twin responses for further process. We filter out the protect interfaces, if there are some difference observed in the twin responses. To further filter out invalid probing requests, we cluster the remaining responses into different groups based on the content of response body. The responses of invalid requests are the majority and can be clustered into several groups, corresponding to the several errors handling cases in the web server. The outliers are unprotected interfaces, namely open interfaces and hidden interfaces. In the set of unprotected interfaces, we identify the two types of hidden interface. For device setting interface, we first extract parameters from the code of the front end in firmware. Then we send out the twin requests, one with the parameters and the other without the parameters and observe if there is any difference in the responses. If so, it indicates that the request with the parameter takes effect on the device side, by either changing the device setting or inquiring the status of the device. To identify information disclosure interfaces, we build a dictionary of keywords and match the content of the interfaces with the keywords in our dictionary. The keywords come from two sources. NVRAM parameters and configuration files. At last we match the page content with the keywords. When at least two keywords are matched in the dictionary, IoT Scope reports it as an information disclosure interface. We implemented a prototype and use 17 devices to evaluate the tool. They come from 11 well-known vendors, with latest firmware. Device types include cameras, video recorders, GPON modems, powerline adapters, 4G routers, firewall router, etc. We compared this tool with Fermadyne. To our surprise, it identified 44 vulnerabilities, 43 of them were previously unknown. We got 8 Cape Verde Escudos IDs after responsible disclosure. In terms of the statistics of requests and responses, on average, IoT Scope extracts 117 paths and 326 files from each firmware, producing 62,357 URLs as probing requests. We set different similarity thresholds in clustering. The larger the threshold, the more clusters produced, which produces false positive. Luckily, as we tested, when threshold is larger than 0.4, FP of this step can be eliminated in the step of hidden interface identification. 20 device setting interfaces and 48 information disclosure interfaces were reported by this tool. In the end, we manually confirmed that there were 10 device setting interfaces and 34 information disclosure interfaces. Regarding performance, as can be seen, on average, it takes 2,848 seconds, which is 47 minutes, to test a device. Interaction with the device consumes most of the time.
CVE 2017-5521 reported that an inauthenticated attacker could get the admin password of a router by accessing the hidden interface password recovered.cgi, shown in figure. This vulnerability affected 13 Netgear device models. The hidden interface is not a web file but a function within the binary web server. IoT Scope discovered this vulnerability as it extracts strings inside binary web servers to generate probing requests. The matched keywords are admin, username, and password. In the experiments, we found that this vulnerability affects the WNDR4000 device model, which is not included in the report of CVE 2017-5521. We reported minus 2019 Cape Verde Escudos minus 17,512. A vulnerability affecting DIR 412 router of D-Link. IoT Scope extracted the parameters of page log underscore clear .php. The parameters reside in JavaScript code which sends AJAX requests. In the first request. No content is received in the response as no parameters are attached. For the second time, when IoT Scope sends the request with the parameters, the router's log file is cleared and the information shown in figure is returned in the response. There are some future directions that worth exploring. First of all, the types of identified vulnerabilities can be extended. There are other authorization issues such as insecure direct object reference. Second, the manual verification procedures can be improved with automated techniques. For instance, leveraging sentiment analysis to determine whether a page is sensitive or involves device setting operations. Thank you for your listening. This project is available at the following address. And if you are interested in this work, you can connect with the author or corresponding author. Email addresses are listed below.